This weekend, I made the impulsive decision to go out and buy a new iPhone. And before we get started, I did want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Ever since I saw that the pink iPhone came out, I wanted it. I just never bought it because I didn't want to end up broke. But now, here we are. I finally gave in. I got the new pink iPhone 13. I upgraded from the iPhone 11 and I know that isn't that old, but that phone was actually a hand-me-down. It was very much glitchy. There would be moments where it just wouldn't work. And it was getting very frustrating. So I was like, you know what? I do social media for a living. I take pictures and videos 24 7 so i kind of did need a better phone with better storage camera quality and memory anyways this is going to be a fun little phone transformation i am going to be showing you how i decorate my iphone case and set up my phone i will also be showing you how i use my phone as a tool for productivity and make sure to stay tuned for the what is on my iphone portion of this video because i'll also be giving you some tips on how to organize your phone <laughs> I actually just bought a regular clear phone case, nothing special. And the reason for this should be obvious. I didn't want to get a phone case that would cover the pretty pink color, but I did think it was a bit boring and I wanted to spice it up. I went onto Pinterest and did some intense scrolling. So these ended up being the stickers that I decided to use to decorate my phone. don't know why I was being so indecisive about where to put the stickers. Like this whole process took me way longer than it should have. I ended up deciding to not go too overboard. Again, I didn't want to cover the pink iPhone color. So I just put enough to make it look cute. I was pretty satisfied with the outcome. So you thought that I'd learn by Step two, setting up my phone. So I actually transferred all of my data that was on my old phone onto my new one when I was at the Apple store. So basically when I turned on my new phone, my home screen was exactly as I had left it on my old phone. And as you can see, there is no sense of organization. It is super cluttered. And for the first time in a long time, I finally decided to sit down and make the effort to set up my phone and make it look more aesthetically pleasing. This was very much needed. Now for the most dreadful part of setting up my phone, customizing my widgets. This takes so long for no reason, but I actually made an entire video last year on how to customize widgets. The process is literally the same thing, so if you need help figuring out how to do that, go and watch that video. But I went in and added all these little icons that I found on Pinterest. I went in and added more widgets to my phone, but I will go more into depth on the widgets that I added and how I added them onto my phone in the what's on my iPhone portion of this video. Step number three, how I use my phone as a productivity tool. Phones nowadays serve as huge distractions. There was a point where my screen time was 12 plus hours. So my first tip for you guys is to take the most distracting apps and hide them. Literally make them hard to access. I do this by removing them from my home screen so it becomes more of a hassle to use these apps. Tip number two. Another great way to limit distractions is by turning off notifications. I never realized how many unnecessary notifications I had on until recently I noticed how often I would reach for my phone while I was working. So go to your settings and make sure you have them all turned off for unimportant apps. Also, if you haven't already, definitely try out the do not disturb feature as well. Tip number three, it's very easy to just pick up your phone and mindlessly scroll for hours and forget that you have responsibilities. So make it so that when you open your phone, your phone is reminding you to be productive. I do this by keeping widgets on my phone that will remind me of the things that I need to get done. As you can see on my home screen here, I have a bunch of to-do lists on my home screen, all which keep me in check. I literally have this habit tracker widget and I will be talking more about these in the next part of my video. 
Okay, so this is now going to be the what is on my iPhone portion of the video. Also, don't question me. I know I'm wearing jeans in my bed. All right, so let's start with my lock screen. Guys, I promise you, I would never put myself as my own wallpaper, but just because me and Moose looked so cute in this picture, I had to use this as my wallpaper. We're both wearing matching leaf headbands, like, come on. So when you open my phone, this is what it looks like. It's so cute. I am so proud of my iPhone home screen layout. Probably the cutest layout I have ever had. I put way too much work into this. It took way too long, probably an entire morning. So my first screen is mainly dedicated for all of my social media media apps that I use on a daily basis. Then my second screen is for all my productivity and utility apps. Then my third screen is just for all my entertainment and fun apps. The reason that I organize my phone this way is so that it takes away time from me having to look for these apps. All right, so the first thing that I have on my first screen up here at the left right corner is this little widget for my O-Waves app. And guys, this app has been an absolute life changer. The one thing that I struggle with in life is time management. I have been trying so hard to work on that. And this app has actually been helping me with that. It's pretty cool. When you click into it, you can basically see here that I have certain times for doing different tasks. So instead of just creating an entire to-do list and dedicating an entire day to finishing that to-do list, you can actually set times for when you're going to complete those tasks. This app has actually been helping me a lot with staying more productive and more time efficient. And with my time management skills. But anyways, moving on, I have all of my basic social media apps here on my screen with a bunch of these cute little icons. But on the top upper right hand corner here, I just have TikTok, Depop, Photos, and YouTube Studio, which is an app to check your YouTube analytics. Down here, I have the Pinterest app, which you guys should go follow me on, Camera, Notes, and Snapchat. I put this cute little calendar widget here. Down here, I just put this photo widget of this cute little bunny that I felt matched the other icons on this screen. Then the last apps that I have on the screen are YouTube, Instagram, my fitness pal, and my bank app. My fitness pal, if you guys didn't already know, is an app to basically track your calories and all that. Now that I'm taking the gym more serious, this app is a must-have. I used to use this all the time. Then the next page at the top here, I have my habit tracker. So when you click into it, it's actually an app that allows you to track your habits on a daily basis. This is a great way for me to keep myself in check because these are all things that I need myself to do every day, but there's always going to be those days that I forget. So ever since I started putting this little habit tracker on my phone and it's helped a lot with reminding me every day that I need to do these things. Down here, I just have another cute little photo of this artwork that I got from Pinterest. On here, I have these folders that mainly consist of like productivity and utility apps. First folder I have here is for all of my school apps like Google Docs, Zoom, Canvas, Quizlet, Google Drive, Pocket, and this app was actually for one of my classes that we had to read articles for. What's really cool about this app is that if you're reading an article on your computer and you need to exit the app for whatever reason, and you can actually resume reading this article on your phone. Then down here, I just have my Translate app. I was taking a French class over the summer and this was so useful. I decided to just keep it on here. Then this next folder here is for my money and shopping related apps. This is definitely a day-to-day -day folder for me that I go to. So the first one that I have on here is Magic Links and this is actually like an affiliate thing for YouTube. I have the Venmo app, PayPal, Credit Karma, Amazon, and Yelp. And it's so funny, I used to think that Yelp was for old people, but recently I've become obsessed with it. I literally use Yelp for everything. Next, I have my edit folder. Before, I used to have so many different editing apps, but guys, I have come a long way, okay? I have dialed down the amount of editing apps I use to just two, basically. I don't need anything more than this. These are literally the apps that I use for anything photo editing related. So one of them is Fonto, and this is basically what I use to put like text on my thumbnails. Then I have Superimpose, which is the best photo editing app. Like anything that you could think of, you can do on this app. And it does cost money, but it is so worth it. Then next to it, I have Layout, which isn't an editing app. It's just for Instagram for you to like make collages on. Then the last app that I have on here is called Lens Buddy. Basically, if you take your own photos, you can actually use this app as a timer. So that way you don't have to have someone help you take your photos and you don't have to have those little mouse clickers either. This literally does it for you. In one of my recent videos, I actually used this app when I was taking my own photos. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Then the last folder that I have here is for all of my utility apps, which is my camera, calendar, clock, maps, app store settings, FaceTime phone, Google Maps. Then at the very bottom of this page here, I just have 
my reminders. I love this feature so much because it allows me to actually see the reminders that I have for myself for the day on my home screen. And knowing how forgetful I am, this is so helpful. So then the last page that I have on here is for all of my fun and entertainment apps. So at the top here, I have like a mood tracker, which I thought was very fun. So basically you click into it, click on the day, and you can put in your mood if you're happy, sad, mad, annoyed, whatever. Once you do that, it allows you to put a little note as to why you felt that way this day. Then down here, I just have my Notion widgets. Basically the main page that I use on my Notion is my YouTube planner. So I made it so that when I click into it, it takes me directly to my YouTube planner page. And I'm not gonna scroll too far down on this because it does have my video ideas and all the stuff that is coming up in the next month. The first folder that I have on here is for all my fun apps, which are just like games and entertainment like Netflix. I honestly could live without these apps, but I just have them on here for those days where I have literally nothing better to do and I'm bored out of my mind. At least, you know, I know that I have this folder to go to. So the first app I have on here is called Perfect and it's basically a really cute little cat game. Again, super useless and unnecessary, but it's so cute. I have this app called Rillakuma Farm, which is again, just another cute app that I have on here. We have Minecraft. Let's not question it. Next, we got Netflix, this app called Animal Restaurant. Once again, Let's not question it. I have the Sims app. Yes, the Sims. And as a matter of a fact, I have two Sims apps. Um, fun fact, I used to have an obsession with The Sims and recently I decided to download The Sims again as a joke and not gonna lie, it's been kind of fun reliving my childhood. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Then the last folder is just a personal folder, also known as just a bunch of random apps that I didn't really know where to put. I have Google Photos, Flow, which is a period app, like a period tracker. Then I have my gym app and Shazam. I have two widgets down here. One is for the Headspace app. I haven't played Played with the Headspace app too much. I heard a lot of good things about it and I'm still yet to figure it out and like how it works. So down here, I just have my Spotify widget and it just shows you the most recent playlist that I played. The last few apps that I have here on my phone are the ones that I have down here on the screen, which are the basics, Safari, Photos, Mail, and Messages. And I for sure have way more apps than this on my phone, except they're just like in my app library because I really wanted to clear up my actual home screen and only allow the actual apps that I use to be on here. So that way my phone wasn't super cluttered. Oh wow, would you look at that. One more app I have on my phone that you guys should definitely download is Squarespace. Thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and even leverage audience insights. It truly is an all-in-one easy to use platform. You can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. And lastly, you can display posts from your social media profiles on your website. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.